Hi everybody, it's Claudia from Create with Claudia. Join me today as we make mini Quilt As You Go Christmas stockings. I am an Island Boutique Ambassador and each month we have projects to do. And in November of 2022, the project uh, assigned is a Christmas stocking. So I thought about what I wanted to do and I was looking at the fabric I got in my last shipment and I got this gorgeous strip set of two and a half inch strips of uh, their new one of their new lines, Island Boutique's new line called Paisley Got Mod. It was designed by Kate Colloran absolutely fun and funky lots of pretty colors i'm showing it up on the screen uh, i fell in love with this immediately and i really thought it read you could read it, it doesn't not doesn't always read but for me for this project it kind of read Christmassy with the pinks and uh, the limes and things like that just a little funky a little different color you can of course make these in any color you want but I used those strips or some of those strips and some backing and made these really fun stockings I hope you stick around and try them they are very easy to do again it's quilt as you go which is a really fun and easy way to quilt and especially a, 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 a stocking like this all right, it's time to get started on our fun little project. This is mini quilt as you go Christmas stockings and they are super easy to do. They're nice, they're quilted, they're just perfect for like maybe throw a gift card in there or some money or maybe a little bobble. Hey, every girl likes a little diamonds. Hey, you never know a pair of earrings or something like that. Um, anyway, I'm gonna set these aside for now and I'm gonna tell you what supplies we need. Now the measurements I'm going to give you are for, this is enough to make at least two stockings. Remember you need two sides to the stocking. Um, these are very generous measurements. And um, this you can get two nice stockings because you're going to need two pieces of this pattern like that. So actually this this will probably get you four pieces, but you never know. It depends on how you quilt your, your item and things like that. So you need a piece of background fa or backing fabric the back of the quilt fabric and it will be about 22 by 18 and again this is going to give you two stockings generous two stockings then you need a piece of batting the same size i'm using cotton's uh, excuse me hobbs nat hobbs batting all natural cotton which is perfect for this it's a nice thin batting you don't want a real thick bat well you can use whatever batting you want but i prefer a uh, lighter weight batting and a thinner batting because you do have a lot of bulk and the, since they're mini they're kind of thick they're they're not so uh, big to work with so i like that thinner batting and then you need your strips and you're going to need various strips that are about like 22 inches long or so, uh, depending, you know, again, it all depends on how many stockings you want to make. This is just kind of a general rule. And again, I'm using that Paisley Got Mod collection. And I'm just going to lay these out. Now you'll see, see it's a little bit longer than the backing fabric. And that's fine. You just want to do that. And then you're going to, I like to audition them before I start sewing and put them in the order that I want them in. You do not have to do this. You can just do it haphazardly, or if you have a very specific order in mind. See, this one's a little bit shorter, but that's fine, because remember, this is all gonna get cut down. So this is gonna give me an idea. I might switch it up a little bit. Um, but I have enough, and I even have two extras in case I wanna change something up. So I'm gonna remove these again, and we're gonna get started. Well, first I need to tell you the rest of the supplies. So for this, you need maybe seven, six to seven, maybe eight strips that are two and a half inches wide by about 22 inches, 20, 22 inches. And then you're also, the, and that's for the quilt as you go part, excuse me, that's for the, the main stocking part. Now these stockings are lined, so you're going to want a piece of lining, and I've used that same chartreuse green from Island Boutique. Uh, all the fabrics I'm using are from Island, from Island Boutique, excuse me. And this is enough for, you're gonna need two pieces of the lining as well. So for each stocking, you need two pieces of lining. And then you're gonna need my little stocking pattern. And this one, as you can tell, has been used a little bit. I used it to make those other ones. Um, and you can download this on my website. It's a PDF at www.createwithclaudia.com. And last but not least, I'm gonna put this all aside. You need one piece of ribbon, well, two if you're making two stockings, for the hanger. And I cut this about five inches long. I have this cute uh, rick rack, this white rick rack, which I thought was perfect. And I have a ton of it left over from a project. So I've been trying to use this up. 
Alrighty, so here we go. This is my back backing fabric for the quilt as you go. I'm going to lay it on. Now, it's batik, so it's hard to tell which side is the right side, but you want to put the right, uh, excuse me, the wrong side facing up. Well, that would have been good if I said that wrong. The wrong side should be facing up because you're not going to see that part. Then you're going to line up your batting on top very easy and smooth it out. I'm not even worried about these sides. Again, this is all going to get cut up quite a bit. So there is a little bit, you know, you do uh, lose a little bit of fabric this way. And then we're going to start. So I smooth it out really nicely. I've pressed everything nicely. I make sure the back is nice and smooth as well. Get rid of any fab uh, threads. So you're going to start with your first strip. And you are going to lay that down. And let's, you know what, I'm in a polka dotty, uh, I'm going to start with this one this time. You want this to be face up. So the right side of the fabric is going to be facing up. And that is this side. And you're going to line that up with the bottom of your rectangle. And I smooth it down. And then I will pin just so it doesn't slip. I love Quilt As You Go projects like this. They're really easy to do and um, saves you a lot of time. So you're going to do that. And then you're going to pick another strip. So what do you guys think? Maybe we'll go for some really bold pink. I am love. This collection is so pretty. So the next thing you want to do is you're going to line, you're going to put this strip on top of this one right sides facing. So you want those right sides to face and you're going to line it up on that top edge and again you're just going to pin it down. I, always, I do a lot of smoothing in this project just to make sure nothing's shifting and then you're just going to sew along that top edge, edge, excuse me, quarter inch seam allowance. Very easy to do. Okay, so here you go. I'm gonna now I can remove those pins underneath. Watch out, you might forget those are down there and you don't want to sew over them. But here we go now. So this is what they look like before I fold it back. You can see there's my quarter inch seam allowance or seam. Just gonna fold that back very easy. Again, I do a lot of smoothing out. And I'm just gonna run my thumb along that seam just so it lays nice and flat. And now we're going to add another strip. So let's see, what do you think? No, I don't want the pink next to it. How about this? I like that. That's got that fun, those fun pink pop pops. So again, right sides together. You're going to line it up now with this top edge. Very easy. And you're going to pin it down. And you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to sew all along that top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, here's the next strip. So there it is sewn down and we're just going to flip it over. See how it's starting to cover it? And you got that funny, fun pattern with that fun fabric. Let me just show you the back really quickly. I like to keep, I, like I said, I smooth this down throughout this process just to make sure there's no wrinkles in it. And I am just going to keep adding strips until I cover this entire piece of fabric. So when I'm done, you will see what it looks like and then what I do next. Alrighty, so here is my piece of quilt as you go fabric. 
You can see here's the back, nice and smooth, a little bit of extra thread there. I'll toss, chop, chop that off. But here we go, nice and smooth, nice and pressed. At this point, I did, I will take this over and press it, actually give it a nice press uh, before I start because you're gonna need to cut out your shapes in a little bit. However, before we do that, now this is fully quilted, so you don't have to do anything else with this. I like to add a little bit of extra quilting just to add a little decoration. Here, I, you can see it up close, hopefully. I What I'll do is in a contrasting thread, I use this really pretty Aurifil thread. It's like a teal green. I'm just gonna sew a stitch right down the center of all of these lines. Very easy to do, and it'll just add a little, I think it adds also, not only does it add some pretty decoration, uh, it adds some extra stability to that fabric. Two and a half inches is kind of wide, and again, you don't have to do this step, but I think it just adds a little extra, extra something to it. So again, I'm just going to take this and sew down the center, and I'm not even gonna measure, I'm just gonna eyeball it. You could easily put in some decorative stitches. In fact, I might try that. I don't do a lot of decorative stitching, but um, it would be really fun on this one. So I'm gonna do that, and then when I come back, I'll show you the next step. All right, here we go. So you can see, I'm gonna put it up to the camera just a little bit more so you can see where I sewed down the center of some of them. Just a simple top stitch, straight stitch. And then here I did some fun bells, just a little bit of extra touch to it. Let me, this is probably easier to see on the darker one. Very easy to do, just some simple sewing, just to add a little bit of extra something to the stocking. So this part is done. This is my quilt as you go. Again, you don't have to add this extra stitch. I just like to add it for a couple reasons. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is you've cut out that, I printed that uh, pattern over on my website, and I cut it out. You can increase the size of this or decrease it. I don't know if I decrease it too much. Uh, that's about the size of my hand, and that's pretty tight to sew. You'll see when we go around the, the edges and things like that. And now you wanna trace it onto your quilt as you go fabric. Now I'm gonna use, let me get my pen. Now I would normally never, ever, ever use a pen. I would use a marking tool, but I want you guys to be able to see it on camera. So I'm using a pen today. Again, I would never normally do that. And now you can just place your template sort of however you want it to be. Um, remembering that of course some of this will be sewn under on the edges. Let me move this over. I kind of like this dark one for one side. So you're gonna trace around it and I will pin it down. That's why we have all these little holes in this pattern already. I've already used it a couple times. You wanna make sure you don't go over that edge or anything like that. I'm just gonna pin it like two or three times. Maybe one more down here. What I like to do when I make, these are so fun and easy to do, and it's really fun if you do a whole bunch at one time. You can make a big piece of this. You can kind of adjust your strips and everything and make a really big piece and just make maybe, you know, four or five or six at a time. These are great for holiday gifts. They're also cute for your house, let's face it. Or you can even put them on your tree. They're small enough that you put on your tree. Uh, but they're great to give. They're sort of like a built-in wrapping paper. But anyway, so now I'm going to take my marking tool. Again, normally not a pen, but for you guys I am, so you can see it. And just carefully make sure to get it started. Just mark around the outside of your template. You might, for stability, want to print that template out on cardstock if you have it. I thought of that after I printed this, so I'm just go I'm going with this because it works. These would also be cute. Wouldn't these be cute? Like if you're having a holiday dinner and you have a bunch of guests over as a place setting and put a little something like maybe some candies or something in it for each of your guests. I think that'd be really cute. Something for them to take home. 
So you trace around this whole thing. Uh, let's see, I think I'm done. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take the pins off. There, so you can really see that outline. Well, hopefully you can. The fabric has some pattern in it, but hopefully you can see that outline a little bit. And then we need, so this is one side of the stocking, and now we need to do the other. And here's your trick, and I'm just going to do this with one. Uh, you want to flip that pattern over. If you do them both this side, then you're not going to get, you'll get the back side of your fabric, because you're going to sew these two edges together. So always flip that over when you're doing the next one. And let's see, maybe on the other side, do a different little different on the other side. I'm making these really widespread just so I can show you how to do this. Um, again, I could probably have gotten two more out of here, but just for today, I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to change up the colors a little bit. It's always fun to do that. Alright, here we go. Here's the second one. And there you can see it maybe a little bit better. There you can see my two traced patterns. And now I'm going to cut these shapes out. You want a nice heavy duty, because you're cutting through three layers, you want a nice heavy duty pair of scissors. I love my scissors. I got these from my mother-in-law years ago and no one is allowed to use them except for me. <laughs> love these scissors. And I'm just going to start with one, and I like to cut just on that line. And especially because I used pen in this case, I'm definitely going to cut on that line so that um, it doesn't get so it, it gets hidden when I sew it together. All right, so here we go. Here are my two sides. They're going to look like this when they come together. A little bit different on each side just for a little bit of fun. So I'm going to set those aside, and then we're going to do the same thing with our piece of lining. And to save time, and we probably could have done it with these as well, but then uh, I, I, I wanted to get some of that stitching in there. But what you're going to do is you're going to fold this over. And this is my trick for getting two at a time. Makes it a lot easier. And you're going to take your pattern. And this way you only need to trace your pattern once. And, um, and then you're going to get both sides of it because you're fold you folded the uh, fabric over. Now in this case, like I said, in the batiks it doesn't matter as much because of the front and back are virtually identical. But if you're using a fabric uh, that isn't batik, uh, you'll definitely notice that. So... And in fact, when I first started doing this, I did this on one, so I have an extra stocking lining. And again, you're just going to trace around it and then cut it out, and you're going to cut both out at the same time. Just so I, to let you know, before I cut these out, you see how they trace it, I'm going to pin these two layers together just so they don't slip when I'm cutting them out, so I get the same size. All right, here they are. Here's my lining, and now we are finally going to assemble this thing. Okay, so the first thing, here's my two linings and these two pieces I cut out. We need to add this ribbon. So you're going to put it on, because you want it, I usually, you want it hanging on the back like that. Well, that you probably couldn't see that, but anyway, um, this will be uh, the, the lining. This is going to be your uh, right side facing in, and you're going to pin this. You're going to pin this in this corner about an inch or so in from the side, and we're going to sew over that. It's always a little fidgety. There we go. And then you're going to put this, this is the one side, you're going to put this right sides together with the right sides of the lining. 
you're going to line up this top because what we're going to do right now is sew a quarter inch seam allowance on the top only, okay? And that's going to uh, sort of secure down that, that ribbon that's holding it down. And I just pin here. If you watch my videos, I'm notorious for not pinning, but in this case I will. I don't want my pretty stocking to slip. And you're just, again, going to sew on that top edge. You are going to backstitch over that um, the ribbon where it is just to make sure it's secure. So here's what it looks like. Here's, I'm going to show you how you unfold it. There you go. There's your little hook there. Everything's good to go. So I'm going to put that one aside and then we're going to repeat whoops, with this one. All right, so now you have two pieces that look like this. I don't know what, they look like bike handles or something, or maybe like a video game console, <laughs> one of those things. Uh, but anyway, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be sewing these together. So you're gonna place them right sides together. Very important, you wanna pin at that seam, making sure it's nice and even, because that's gonna be your opening and you don't you don't want that all wonky. And you're going to pin there, and I will pin on the other side as well. You will have some bulk when you're sewing. In fact, I'm going to repin that other side so it's sort of folded over and nests a little bit. It's hard with the batting. This is a thicker project here when you're sewing the whole thing together, but that's okay. Let me do that again here. There we go. That's better. Tough to get through. There we go. Whew. And then I'll pin around a little bit more, just sort of making those sure those sides are all even. You want to keep an opening on the lining side. Uh, you can mark it with a pencil, maybe start, but you want to keep a fairly nice size, I would say maybe about at least like three inches or so along, and I like to do it on the bottom, that, that you want to leave open because that's going to be where you turn your project inside out. So let me go ahead and start. So I'm going to start, in fact, I'm going to mark this just so to help you out too. Just end it, and me, I shouldn't say you, me too. Just mark where I'm going to begin and end. You want to backstitch at both those sides and you're just going to quarter inch sew along the whole outside edge, making sure you catch both sides. And I'm going to do that right now. All right, so here we go. I have sewn around the whole edges. I'm just going to double check. You know what? I'm going to sew that just a little bit inside. You can see. Let me put it up to the camera. Hopefully you can see it. I barely caught that edge. So I'm because we have to turn it inside out, you have to mess around with it a little bit. I'm just going to really quickly run over that a little, maybe bring it in a little bit more so it's a little more secure. And then what we're going to do, you can see where I left my opening. And you definitely want to backstitch in both those corners because there's going to be a lot of manipulation here. When I come back, I'll show you how we turn it uh, inside out. Okay, very easy fix. I didn't even tear out the other stitches. I just sewed around it a little more. All right, so now comes the fun part. And you might want to get like a chopstick or some kind of a turning tool. I'm going to use the eraser side. Don't use the pointy side. Use the eraser side of a pencil. That's very high tech. And you are just going to start pulling this through. Always the fun part. All 
All right, we're getting there. <laughs> you can see the little toe here. I'm going to push that out a little bit more. You might need to use your fingers. It is kind of narrow, so take your time with this. It does take a little bit of time, but I promise you it'll turn out just adorable. This is the biggest, like I said, this is the biggest part of this whole, or the biggest pain of this whole project. Well, that and putting the lining in, and you'll see that in a second. Now, it's all wrinkled now. Let me just push this around. Now, what I will do is I'm going to take the eraser side of my pencil and just run it around the edge. Make sure it's all pushed out. Sometimes you miss those little nooks and crannies. Especially on the stocking side, on the out, you know, the padded, the quilted side. Okay, phew, that's always a battle. <laughs> so the next thing we want to do, well, I'm going to press this, give it a nice good pressing so it looks nice and crisp. And you're going to press, you want to press the inside here where, um, the seam is open. You want to fold those in both sides just about a quarter to an eighth, maybe even an eighth of an inch, just a little bit when you press it and then you're going to sew along that seam to close that lining up. So first I'm going to press this nice and neat and I'll show you then how I press this. Let me push that corner out a little bit more. Press this opening to the inside both sides and then we're going to sew just a hair onto maybe an eighth of, barely an eighth of an inch, just right along the outside edge to seal up that uh, hole. All right, there it is, my little stitch. I'm just going to cut off that little thread there. Anything else? And now comes the next fun part, and that is putting the lining into the stocking. And you're just, again, going to push it in with your fingers. You might need to manipulate it with the high-tech uh, pencil gadget. Make sure it's the eraser. I also don't fold in that hanging thing, the hanger. The All right, I'm going to give this one last press only just to keep it nice because when you when you handle it so much and manipulate it, it gets all wrinkly. There we go, pressed. It is ready to fill with all kinds of goodies. Ta-da, there is my little mini quilt-as-you-go Christmas stocking. They are so much fun to make. You can make them in all different patterns. This one, I actually have two different ones on each side. This also, one of them I tried, this one I tried to match up a little bit. Uh, it's totally up to you. You could make, you, depending on how you cut out your uh, stocking shape, you know, you could uh, shape them any way you want. But the pattern is on my website, www.createwithclaudia. And I'm kind of in love with these. <laughs> All right, so what did you think? Here again is my stocking one more time. Here's how it's gonna hang. Uh, here's a couple others. You can see the different colors. I'm kind of loving these. I'm gonna make a bunch more. I think they're great. They actually are wide enough. You can throw a gift card in here. So if you have a gift to give to somebody, throw a gift card in there or some money or some bling. You know, I wouldn't mind some bling in a little stocking like this. Maybe I should give this to my husband. <laughs> anyway, or candy if you just want a little something something. Um, but these were really fun to make. I hope you give them a try. Make sure if you do, I'd love to see your versions of them. If you post to social media, make sure to use the hashtag create with Claudia so I can see them. I love seeing people uh, people's versions of items that I make. Again, thank you to Island Batik. I used their uh, new strip set uh, called Paisley Got Mod. It was designed by Kate Colleran or Kate Col of Kate Colleran Designs for Island Batik. And it's just a really fun and groovy uh, strip set. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell. That way you're always notified when I do a new video. I love doing all kinds of free patterns, tutorials, tips, tricks, that kind of thing. I really have fun here over on my YouTube channel and I'd love you for you to join me. 
Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Thank you.